the scholars who can comprehend if there's a mind that planned the universe. Now that we know even the farthest stars cannot yet touch the end, is there an end? Of blackness for the fading glints they send toward us that travel 14 million years. From where they were when the gleam we see appears, while deep and deeper in the dark they win. Miraculous, not more so than the scheme that through infinitudes of space, of time, and generations brought us together, so will give fulfillment to its destined theme, the more than lifelong love that links us to with serendipity as in a rhyme. Okay, Elizabeth McFarland um, also, well actually pos posthumously, published a book of poems um, called Over the Sun of Water, which is um, out and about in print, if anyone's um, interested. Okay, now um, my poems about Pythagoras, even though the actual inspiration to my understanding of it was random, I mean, I guess you could probably find um, psychoanalytic theories in which it wasn't. Um, it's funny uh, in many ways, and I'll, as I go through a few of the poems I'm going to read tonight, I'll explain uh, a long list of connections that turned out to um, occur or to be there um, with the historical Pythagoras and his life, which I knew absolutely nothing about in 2002 when I started reading his poems. I believe I only knew his name from the theorem. Um, Pythagoras, in fact, was not really a mathematician. Um, he was uh, in the 6th century BC, um, what would now, I mean, it would be referred to as the leader of a cult, but this was not a pejorative term back then because there were many, you know, um, religions and many uh, mystical beliefs and they weren't looked at, um, you know, in the same sort of maybe uh, critical way that that tends to be looked at now. Um, Pythagoras was, um, I think you could um, make the case, to use a, another modern word, he was a progressive, he was an advocate. Um, uh, particularly um, for the emancipation of slaves, but also for the equality of women, and also for the rights of animals. Okay, I'll, I'm going to read a few poems that bear these themes out, but I just want to uh, mention some of this background in advance. Um, he believed in a philosophy called transmigration of souls, which is, is similar to the Hindu idea of reincarnation. Uh, I, met, I mentioned, I think, the anecdote last night where he saw someone whipping a dog and told him to leave his uncle alone. Uh, and he, he acquired a following um, posthumously that was quite important um, in the last few centuries BC, reaching its peak in the first decade AD when the Pythagorean party, which was a political party, had 75 seats uh, in the Roman Senate. And the bust of Pythagoras that people used to gather around uh, during their breaks to kind of reflect or argue with each other actually survives in the Roman Forum. Um, it was a mostly, again to use a modern term, middle class, well-educated movement. Um, it was threatened by Christianity and actually attempted um, in several um, instances to, to um, posthumously create writings that were sort of Pythagorean Gospels, but um, it was uh, not successful and it was taken seriously um, as a rival by the church. And actually, it's for that reason that a lot of the Pythagorean legacy, legacy has been unknown until modern times. Even though, oddly enough, there's a bust of Pythagoras on the Cathedral of Notre Dame, and there was a small, I'd say, a segment of the church, uh, the learned monks who admired um, you know, his ideas, and also um, he's been you know, historically affiliated with music. So it's a very complex, uh, very rich history. Um, if anyone has any further interest, um, I recommend a book called Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans by a man named Charles Kahn, professor of philosophy at the University of Pennsylvania, who does a very, uh, does an excellent, really, um, I'd say, very objective job. Anyway, I, over the years, writing these poems, found you know all these connections, but I entered into it, you know, really just as I said, with um, this serendipitous confusion. Um, and any time I make an error nowadays, you know, I always reassure myself that. Um, you know, could be for the best in some weird way. Um, when you lose money, you know, trading in the stock market, it's hard to believe that. But, um, anyway, so I have two books um, which have either entirely or largely poems about Pythagoras, and I now have um, hopefully a publisher. Uh, the next manuscript, um, which is uh, actually um, marks a somewhat of a return to writing more free verse, but it does have several Pythagorean sonnets in it. Uh, the book is called Wandering Electron, 
uh, and I'm going to read two um, from the book. The first one um, is called Pythagoras. Pythagoras is Bees. It has a prescript from uh, Saadi, who was a 13th century Persian poet. And the prescript is, the fascinating drowse of the morning keeps the traveler from traveling. Something that's happened to me every morning on this trip. <laughs> Including today when I somehow managed to sleep till 10. Okay. The fascinating drowse of small white bees in dreamy hover over red petals distracts Pythagoras. He doesn't see a hawk's stiletto sharp trajectory, hypotenuse of plummet sliding air toward sudden talon spike of careless hair. Nor does he notice first light's trapezoid, branch etched in pond, scarlet geometry. He's sleeping with these bees, though wide awake, savant of minutia. He loves the balm, mild wafts of air offer bees slow float and hem. Sweet scented haze. There's nothing wrong with all the world in this tableau that soothes. Bees startle into flight, but P won't move. Uh, the, I just want to also uh, mention the use of um, the initial P for Pythagoras. Um, uh, you know, I have a few fans. I mean, not a whole lot, but it's been widely disliked. I'd have to say since I started doing it. But as I worked with the sonnet over the years, which has 14 lines and 10 syllables, which I generally try to follow, I suddenly, or you know, at a certain point, reached the conclusion that I was using up an awful lot of space on Pythagoras. And, um, <laughs> So I, I try to get away with P as much as I can. Um, okay. And then the second one from 